I started when I was young making magazines at school that I would kind of produce and sell to my friends. And there's always been that kind of interest in, in, in making things, but I went to study physics. Uh, physics is an incredible degree. It's a, it's a rich set of metaphors for how the world works uh, that you can mine endlessly. I still use it now. But while I was there, I discovered the internet. And what I saw on the internet was this uh, ability to be able to publish and also to socialize. The internet is a social space. And everything I'd been doing with magazines suddenly came back to me. And my life changed at that moment. I wanted to work on this thing where I could make and talk and produce. So I went to work for a startup. And since then, it's been just a matter of saying yes to every single opportunity. Uh, I wrote this book about how the brain works. It was just fantastic to deep dive into how humans and technology, because I think that's really where it's coming from, uh, sort of meet uh, individually and in groups. And around the same time, I met uh, Jack Schultz who I founded the company as it was then, Schultz and Webb, and then shortly afterwards met Matt Jones, um, another designer, and the studio became Berg. I don't think I would have taken the path uh, I've taken without the deep knowledge that physics has given me, just the, the, the way of understanding, uh, the desire to make things, uh, but mainly the people I've met and the design sensibility that they've taught me. There's something which is very similar between physics and design in that both of them you're allowed to go as abstract as you like, uh, but you have to come back down to stuff. I think what's happened with Little Printer is we've made something which people feel happy to have in their lives, in their homes, along with them, which is what we were trying to do. And not as an individual use, but something you kind of welcome in, almost like as a, a member of the family or a flatmate, in the same way you might you know, welcome a, welcome a pet in. Uh, but it's also something which is just delightful. And uh, being able to make a product which uh, is to do with delight and joy and not being kind of austere or sitting on a pedestal. I think it's very important as a designer to take part in the discourse of design. You have to self-identify as a designer are the training that people have at design colleges uh, as a way of thinking, as a way of approaching problems, is um, enormously important and designers should kind of feed back uh, into it. There are lots of ways of coming up with um, solutions to problems or inventing new products or, uh, or seeing the world, you know, ethnography, uh, MBAs, uh, just plain old genius, you know, all of these are, all of these are really good things. Uh, design is very particular because of its heritage uh, and its concentration on a mix of intuitive and rational thought. So to me it does come down to Jack's definition, which is this kind of funny obligation that I think designers have, not really to the world, but to designers of discipline, uh, to invent culture. What really excites me is that technology is finally becoming social. I've always been interested in this idea of products, objects, technology as something that exists in social groups of five to ten people. So when I say social, I don't mean Facebook where you have lists of a thousand people, like you're making an Excel spreadsheet of like all your buddies, right? I mean kind of um, physical social groups, um, the number of people who can fit in the room. How does technology exist in that world? Because it can't exist in the way uh, a mobile phone does. You wouldn't want to log into a TV or into your recipe computer or something, that just, that just wouldn't be right. But what's happening now is we have these enabling technologies that allow multiple people to use the same UI, our user interface, simultaneously. And uh, the two things that are really big for me is one is voice recognition. And you can see the beginnings of that with Apple's Siri uh, and also in the Xbox and the Kinect uh, with gesture recognition. And computers are now seeing the world and acting into it. And these come together in interesting ways. You know, they come together in robotics, they come together in, you know, the Kinect games, they come together in, uh, you know, in Siri. But when you start putting them all into one thing and making objects that live in your front room uh, that you use in groups and not singly, 
uh, that feels very exciting to me because finally technology is becoming something which is part of human lives instead of humans being part of its. Thank you.